What's up, guys? My name is Colin Moriarty. I'm here with Jared Petty, the illustrious. Greetings, Jared Petty. And we're here to play a little bit of The Legend of Zelda uh, for our top 125 Nintendo games. Uh, the Legend of Zelda, obviously, is a very early NES game, a game that I hold very near and dear to my heart. And I'm sure you do too, Jared. Uh, this is a game that was very, very important to me as a young man. Uh, and, uh, you know, I just, uh, you know, I, this game was so influential to me that it's actually one of the reasons I'm in this industry because I wrote a really, uh, really big FAQ for it on GameFAQs when I was in high school. Uh, one of the things that got me noticed back in the day. So we're just going to play the first 10 minutes or so of the game now. Now, Jared, how did you play this game when you were a kid? Did you Were you one of the crazy people like me that tried to do as many things as possible before even going oh, to yeah. the first dungeon? Yeah. Getting, uh, the, uh, getting the second sword and yes. the candle you and all those things? You don't need to go out the, down there without the white sword. I mean, the fact is you've already got uh, you've already got three heart containers available early in the game that you can just run and grab. You want to fill up your bombs. You want to get as, as many items as you can. You want to have the magic shield. Well, why go down into that first labyrinth and do something more difficult than is necessary? When you can just run around this world and grab all the things you already need. For example, there's an area up here we could bomb. We don't have any bombs yet. So where do you think we should head first, Colin? I mean, what are we going to go do? Are we going to find a heart container? Sure, yeah. We, let's go, let's okay. go get a heart container. And, and, okay. and you know, it, it's, it doesn't doesn't hurt to, you know, collect a bunch of rupees as you're going to. Yeah. And, and basically getting to hang for it now. I mean, just in terms of the game itself, I mean, this is just such an essential yeah. game. Uh, you know... This game was so hugely influential on me as a kid because it was so much bigger and broader than a lot of the yeah, games we were playing. Yeah, I think that's that's where you want to start is that map. It came with a paper map uh, because back in the day, kids, uh, paper maps. And just the sheer size of the world at that point in history was was mind-boggling. I mean, there had been computer RPGs with enormous worlds, but none of, them, none of them allowed you to come down to a micro scale and have direct control of your character the way The Legend of Zelda was. And because of that, this world just appeared immense. In addition to the gigantic overworld, you had nine, count them, nine separate dungeons. And that was when we didn't even know about the second quest. Once you typed in Zelda or actually beat the game, you found a second iteration of this world that you could play through again at just the sheer scale. But scale isn't everything, and the fact is there's just a wonderfully solid action adventure here uh, to uh, to do in that world. There's so much to do, so much to find. You can go almost anywhere from the beginning. Colin, uh, you mentioned a, a little bit of obsessive compulsion. I mean, how much of that stuff did you discover on your own? What? How many times did you play it through that you got to a pattern of how you wanted to go through the game? Oh, I, I discovered very little of it on my own. I had an older brother that that showed me a lot of these things, and you know, by the time I was a little bit older, let's say in middle school, I, I had basically the game me you know, memorized, and and you could beat it quickly, and you could try to beat it with nothing, with just three heart containers, and just yeah. the, the very few things that you actually need, um, or at least get through with you know very very little. Um, there are some things that you actually have to have, of course. Right. Um, and uh, you know, it, I really enjoyed those things. I mean, one of the things that really stood out to me about the game too, when I was was when I was a young man, especially after coming off of playing like games like Kid Icarus and Metroid was, uh, the game had a battery in it and like it, it, it's, it saved your game and you didn't have to have these cumbersome codes where you were f afraid if you were typing in the zero or the O or the capital O or the lowercase yep. O and, and all those things, all those things that old NES fans remember and, and dreaded. Yeah, and uh, by the way, those, those batteries, uh, I don't know who produced them, I don't know who made them, but I still find Zelda games that work. Uh, this, I find Nintendo games occasionally where the battery is somehow still functioning and there are still memorized games on them. I wouldn't want to rely on it, but I, I'm really kind of shocked they worked that well. And I'm probably driving you crazy here because we all know the proper way to get bombs is to go kill blue moblins, and I haven't been doing that. So I, I need to go find some blue moblins. Well, it's hard to it's hard to talk and, and play at the same time, so oh, do okay. forgive us. Oh. And uh, yeah, I, I, I you know. <laughs> it's just so funny watching this game being played because I was just I was so obsessed with it. And like you said, the second quest especially was was so dynamic because it really more than doubled the game time. Yeah. Um, especially if you were unfamiliar with it. And I, I I remember talking to my uncle who's you know a bit older than me, and he was talking about you know this was one of the games that justified the helpline that you would call in oh, yeah. in the eighties. That, that there was just so much obscure stuff. People running around bombing every wall. People running around yep. burning every bush with the candle uh, to find all these hidden secrets. Lots of myths. Oh, crap. I slipped and did that. Uh, folks, this is this is what happens when you... Oh, there, there we are. it is. Yeah, I knew where it was. I, I'm embarrassed there. I'm, for all of posterity, for all of eternity, there's going to be a video of me bombing the wrong slot. But I swear it's because I slipped on the controller there. Yeah, we are using the Wii U tablet to play this, so it is a little cumbersome. It's definitely yeah. not that tight NES controller we're all used no, to. Um, uh, is it here on this one? Okay, now, oh, well, there we go. Look at there, a lever hit me. Octoroks, Tektites, levers, and, you know, do you remember it, Colin? Can can you sing it? No, I can't sing it. Can it's, you sing it? It's The Legend of Zelda, and it's really rad. Those creatures from Hyrule are pretty bad. Uh, Octoroks, Tektites, levers, too, but with your help, our hero comes through. 
and he's like woogie woogie woogish or something like that there at the end. I believe that's the song. Uh, you know what's the this, next one? This just reminds me of just the oh, bombing, by the way. You I'm wasted your bombs. myself. I know. Look at oh, this. Oh, we're, we're old men now. I mean, this has been a long. It's been a long time since we really played this guy. I haven't sat down and played. Zelda all the way through since since high school probably. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, I did it like six months ago. Um, and uh, you know the battery story by the way reminds me of when I was in when I was in college and I broke out my NES. I had my NES hooked up pretty much the entire time I was at college, and I went to play Final Fantasy, and my battery was broken in the game, so I actually just kept it paused for as long as possible and just kept, oh. and just kept playing. And no not kidding. a super practical thing. Uh, I wasn't even using a top loader, so any sudden movements around the NES would would reset it. But uh, the the, the, sh the we take like memory cards, and obviously now internal memory for granted. Um, Can't get but that the, the, the batteries are are essential back in these games. Man, I'm playing horrible here. Okay, so guys, a few tips. If you are going to be OCD like Colin and I, there is a right way to do this. Okay, there are three heart containers that you can get early on before you even enter the first dungeon. You want to grab all of those. One of them is the one we just grabbed there. Uh, the other two are also located, one behind a burning bush. The other, I think, is behind another bombable wall. You want to get the blue ring, which you can help afford by going behind the casino. There's a hidden wall go through the hidden wall you get a ton of rupees you can use those to buy the blue ring which is hidden beneath uh, a soldier and, uh, and the blue ring uh cuts your damage taken by a fourth right is that uh, is that correct yeah you actually cuts it by a half and then the red ring cuts it by a half again oh, okay. down to a fourth so uh right, yeah you actually take it's... half damage with the blue ring it's kind of awesome i'm just kind of power ramming through these moblins instead of being uh, evasive like I should be. So did you do when you were younger, did, or maybe even older, did you try to do the minimal quest as well to get as little as possible? Oh, just go through yeah. and with this fiat? No, I, I'm far too OCD. I want yeah, to I don't, I, I mean, it's, it's something you can do, and, 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 I've, and I've played games like that, including this one, and I know people really enjoy that. There are, there are FAQs dedicated to a lot of games to do as little as possible, which I think is fun. But yeah, I need to. I like to do everything. Mm -hmm. I like to get everything. I like to feel yeah. powerful. Exactly. I, you know, there, there are items called the power bracelet. I mean, how could you not want that? Uh, there's the, there, there, and there's so much to find. Uh, Exploration is part of the fun. But yeah, there are some pretty uh, delightful minimal words. Look at that. Okay. Well, this is a good place to probably wrap it yeah. up. Yeah. Jeez, look at that. But yeah, folks, it's The Legend of Zelda. It is, in fact, really rad. Not only is it a classic, but it actually stands up. The gameplay is ridiculously fun. Uh, when you get down to the dungeons, in particular, the boss fights are well constructed. The puzzles are very clever. There's a lot to explore and a lot to find. Uh, this is a game that stands the test of time. Do not let the primitive visuals fool you. Uh, this is actually a, a, a delight to play through from beginning to end. And the second quest is as hard as anything there is in the world uh, to deal with. And, and I will say, too, that you know I always say it's important to understand the history of games um, and this is an important one if you're a younger gamer or more than an experienced gamer that hasn't played it, uh, Zelda before you'll see a lot of the games you love uh, in Zelda um, so uh, check it out it's on a lot of different platforms so you can check it out wherever you are basically thank you for tuning in and goodbye